Okay, I hope you'll be happy because these questions I actually already wrote out. Um, my handwriting is terrible and I, I'm not ashamed of that. Um, but it's difficult when you're trying to teach people and you're not actually sitting in the room with them. So anyway, I just want to go into this. Um, this is a popular question that you're going to see in biochemistry. If you don't see it in biochemistry, you'll see it somewhere else because it's extremely important in bio to our you know, biology and life in general. And it says, describe in detail how the hormone glucagon affects glycogen metabolism in the liver. Okay, now glycogen metabolism means glycogen breakdown, which is called uh, glycogenolysis, or glycogen synthesis. Okay, so they're talking about the breakdown or formation of glycogen in the metabolism. So what does glucagon do? How does glucagon affect this process? And what you'll find out is that glucagon is released by the pancreas. You, you guys probably know that. Most people know that. Um, and it's in response to low blood glucose. So you have to remember that. That's the classic thing that everybody's got to try and get straight right away. Glucagon is a response to low blood glucose. Um, and insulin is a response to high blood glucose. Okay, So if there's high blood glucose, then you have insulin response. But anyway, glucagon is released by the pancreas in response to low blood glucose. So thus, the net result will be upregulation of glycogen breakdown. Because if I need, if, if, if this is a signal, this is a hormone signal telling me that I have low blood glucose. So what's going to happen? Well, the first, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find some glucose. And a great place to get glucose is to break down glycogen that's stored in the liver or in the muscle. There's a small amount stored in the muscle, not much, but you know, enough to enough to help out, but most of it's in the liver. So anyway, you're going to upregulate glycogen breakdown and um, and the, and the regulation of glycogen, and you're going to downregulate, I should say this, upregulate glycogen breakdown and downregulation, and you're going to have downregulation of glycogen synth synthesis. So you're not going to be making glycogen, because just like all other anabolic processes, making glycogen requires energy, okay? And if you're low on energy and you have some signal that's telling you blood glucose is low, then you're not going to be synthesizing any molecules, okay? So the process begins when when glucagon binds to the receptor on the surface of the cell. Okay, and this activates a G protein. All right, there's more detail to this. You probably don't need this uh, that great of detail, though, for a um, introductory class. So I'm just going to kind of use layman's terms here. So, the, so it activates a G protein, and when the G protein interacts with the receptor, it initiates a biochemical cascade. Okay, and that results in the production of cyclic AMP. Now, cyclic AMP is very important because it activates what's known as protein kinase A. Okay, and protein kinase A goes on to activate what's known as phosphorylase kinase. Okay, so it activates phosphorylase kinase, which phosphorylates glycogen synthase. Which, which phosphorylates glycogen synthase, converting it to the less active, and they're converting it to a less active form. Okay, so the phosphorylation of the enzyme, which I should have pointed out here in my paper, but I'll underline it. Glycogen synthase is the enzyme that synthesizes the glycogen molecule. Okay, so when it's phosphorylated, it's inactive, or, or I shouldn't say inactive, less active, very, you know, down regulated. So it converts it to the less active form. But glycogen phosphorylase, on the other hand, okay, when phosphorylated, is more active, upregulating glycogen breakdown. So glycogen phosphorylase, which I, again, I should have probably made bold, but I will underline it now. So glycogen phosphorylase, okay, on the other hand, when phosphorylated, is more active, okay? And that's going to upregulate glycogen breakdown, which is exactly what we want. Upregulating glycogen breakdown means we're releasing glucose into the blood. The release of glucose into the blood is helping us to, to respond very rapidly, respond extremely rapidly. And there's reasons why, because the glycogen molecule itself is very branched, and that branching allows this many, many starting points for the breakdown. Okay, so we can rapidly um, release glucose into the bloodstream. Extremely important stuff. And the phosphorylation cascade um, thus upregulates also gluconeogenesis in the liver. So you should remember that the phosphorylation cascade also upregulates gluconeogenesis in the liver. Another important point, you will lose points if you don't say that.
Um, so these are some really important points, but one thing I want to point out, which I think is really, really interesting, is check this out. We have reciprocal regulation. If you recall, I talked about reciprocal regulation quite a bit in some of my other videos. And um, when we phosphorylate glycogen synthase, it's in its less active form. But at the same time, phosphorylating glycogen synthase, phosphorylase rather, so phosphorylating glycogen phosphorylase, that's a mouthful, um, <laughs> actually activates it. So you can see it's got a reciprocal effect here. Okay, In one case we're activating and in another case we're deactivating with the same molecule. So again, saves energy, makes sense for the cell. So hopefully this is helpful.